Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today I'm gonna to be showing you guys a really cool software called Rust Desk, which is open soft remote desktop software similar to TeamViewer and AnyDesk. So let's check it out. Now you guys might be wondering why it's actually on a Pi hosted series. And that's because since it's open source, you can actually host your own relay server, which means you don't need to use any public services to relay your data to find your computer. You could just host it yourself, which means it's more private and you can also encrypt the traffic. Now, not only that, Rustdesk actually has so many features that I wish a lot of these other <laughs> remote desktop softwares have. And yeah, I'm gonna show them all to you. On a sidebar, you might also notice I have a new logo for the Raspberry Pi hosted series, which is created by one of my members on the Discord, which is right here. So moving forward from now on, I will be using this logo. And yeah, that's pretty cool. Now jumping into the desktop, uh, we will be using Solus. And I reviewed this desktop last week but I do need to make a part two because I am discovering more and more stuff about this that I do need to talk about. Anyway, um, to start off, we're gonna check out Rust Desk's main website. Now, this is a remote desktop software just like TeamViewer. It works out of the box, which is true because the server, I didn't really have to set up anything. And because we have it on our repository, on our portainer, you literally have to do almost nothing. You have full control of your data with no concerns about security. You can either use the public relay server or you can self-host your own, which is big in this fact. Now, I've been using this for the past three weeks and I switched all my home infrastructure over to this locally. So I'm not hosting it publicly, I'm hosting it uh, through my Raspberry Pi and all the computers like this one right here or my desktop or anything in my house that requires some remote access for me to tinker with has Rust Desk now. Instead of having to enable remote desktop or enable other services, I've just solely been using this and it's been working out great because of some of the features that they have. Um, here are the screenshots. You can use it on your mobile app. You can use it on Mac, Windows, anything. Best of all, it does work on Raspberry Pi. Now on their website, they also have a web beta. This requires you to have Chrome and Similar to uh, TeamViewer or any desk, you could just plop in the number of your computer and this will be able to connect to that remote IP or remote uh, desktop. So it's still beta. Um, I was able to get it to work if I'm not using my own private relay server. If my computer was on a public relay server, this does work. Now, as you can see, it actually supports Windows, Mac, Ubuntu, Raspberry Pi, and iOS. So if you don't find the version of the operating system you're using here uh, on the bottom, Click on these three dots, it'll actually bring you over to GitHub and it has Fedora, Manjaro, Raspberry Pi right here, SUSE, 32 bit of Windows and so forth. So if you're looking for a particular version that's not on their website, it will be there as well as app images. So if you're using a Linux operating system like I am, Solus that doesn't have dev packages or anything, you can use the app image right over here and it works. Now to set it up, I am gonna pop over to my portainer and those of you who are not familiar on how to install this, I do have a video or a playlist that I'll put right over here for you guys so you can follow along and get this updated to the way it's supposed to be. Now, uh, right over here, you could just pop into your container and go into app templates. I know I have a new version. I just haven't had a chance to update it yet, but I will do it later. Going down the app template, um, you just need to search for Rust. And there you go, your Rust desk server. There's not much settings you can do here or need to do here other than setting up the relay IP if you're using a, a DNS or open DNS or something that will point to your server. If you're using it locally, you could just put your IP address in here. The IP address of your server, not the local IP of the uh, container. Now, here you could also change this setting to encrypt. It's either zero or one. If you use encrypted, you will need to always have a 32 character key for every relay server, I mean, for every client, just so they could connect to the relay server. So for now, I actually have this at zero just to do this video, but if you keep it at one, all your traffic will be encrypted. Once you're done with that, you could just deploy the container. And then there are five ports that you need to forward. And I'm gonna explain them super quick. The five ports you need to forward through your router is 2115 all the way to 2119. 21115 is the actual NAT port. So you need to have that forward as TCP. 
21116 needs to be forwarded as TCP and UDP, which is the heartbeat monitor. It tells you what the services are up, if they're down, etc. for discovery. So the 2116 is for the heartbeat. And then 21117 is your relay server itself. So that needs to be TCP and that has to be forwarded. So those are the three at minimum ports that you need to forward. Now you have 21118 and 21119. Those two parts are for the web interface. So if you don't ever plan on using this uh, through the web, you actually don't need to forward those two ports and those are required TCP. Otherwise, that is it. Once you forward those ports, you'll be able to access this from the outside in. Now, if you don't plan on ever accessing this from the outside or from your mobile phone or remotely, or even if you have a VPN connected to your house, you might not even need to forward any of these ports because you could just host everything locally so your internal network would be able to see each other through Rust Desk. Otherwise, yeah, if you wanted to be able to reach outside, you would forward those ports. Once all that is set, you are ready to go. So on this main computer, I already have Rust Desk installed. Actually, I'm running an app template, so it's not even really installed. And through discovery, it will actually find all the computers that are on. If you saw that a split second something disappeared, that's because my main desktop was actually, uh, it's actually off right now, so it's not there. But you can actually just connect to any of these remote. And yes, it does work on Linux. It works really great on Linux as well. And it works on Windows. So some of the features that I do like about this is right here. You can have audio input, which works off Linux, depending, okay? If you're using GNOME, and Pipewire, it still has an issue with it. So if you're using GNOME with Pipewire, audio doesn't pass through, but if you're using anything else that's using Pulse Audio, it works fine with audio. Um, you could also set up a remote configuration modification. So you could actually remotely modify the same settings off a remote machine by enabling that. Your ID relay server, this is the important bit. When you go in here, this is where you would type in your URL or your IP address of your server. If you are locally, you know, in your home network, you don't need to use, uh, input the relay server. Otherwise, it would be actually the same thing here, plus 21117, that's it. Um, your API server and then your key. Now your key is your 32 character key for encryption. You can actually get that through the logs through your portainer on your Rust desk. So the key will actually be displayed in your logs. I'm not using the encryption key right now. One, because I'm fully local. Two, it makes the video a lot harder when I have to kind of copy and paste the key over back and forth. So that's all you have to set up. Now, other settings here, you could enable services or direct IP access. So if you don't remember the number of the actual ID of the computer, you could just type in the IP address right through the remote control here and it'll actually hit it. Uh, you could log in, which I don't know what that is. It actually says username and password. I have no idea where this hits or what it does. I have not tested anything with login, but I'm guessing it has to do with web. Um, and then you could change ID, which is change ID. One of the other big features that I like is that there is TCP tunneling. TCP tunneling is big because I use it on SSH and you can tunnel ports from a remote machine to a local machine. So if you're hosting something on the network on your remote machine, you could just pass it through to your local machine. So what I'm gonna do right now is actually connect to my Linux which I'm testing Zorin OS, and it will actually work if you even have a sleep feature. It'll wake it up and you have to type in the password to get in. This is the box that you uh, would see, the remote computer would see that you are connected. It has the timer, you could file transfer, everything you want in here. Um, the buttons here is allows you to talk to that machine. So I could just do test and bam, something will pop up. This is where you would do all the file transfer, tunneling, or actually, you know, pass through the control alt delete. From here, this one you could change to quality, size, or, you know, depending on what you're doing, you could change all this. And these are the buttons that you have to see right over here if you want to mute it, disable clipboard, these are the same buttons. So that is um, Zorin OS. And let me see if I could actually, because it's the same resolution as the desktop I'm using right now. So I'm going to see if I could stretch it. Or is it shrink? Yeah, shrink, not stretch, shrink. And now I can see the menu over here. So what I mean by tunneling, if you guys never use it on SSH, uh, let me see, terminal. I am gonna host this file. So let's do Python 3 module HTTP dot server. And now I'm hosting port 8000 of this folder, right? So on that remote machine, and it actually works really well, look, 
like I could actually move the windows pretty fast. If I do 127.0.0.1 port 8000 on that machine, you would see all these files because I'm hosting that directory as a web browser, right? But if I pop over here and do TCP tunneling and then set it up, local port would be 8000, or you could do with this any port you want, but I'm just gonna say 8000, remote host port, which we know we are hosting something at eight, oh, not host, host port, which we are hosting at something at 8000, you just have to add. Remote host, you could actually do a tunneling service to point it to another server on another IP if you are, yeah. Basically, if you are trying to look for something in another IP address, you could put the remote host there. So I'm gonna hit add. It's gonna be 8,000 to their local host of 8,000, okay? And now, if I was to open my own browser here, for, from my web browser on my physical machine to the remote browser, and it, if I go over to downloads, I might find, yep, rustdesk.dev and you could see the back actually transferred over. So that's how tunneling works. So that's one of the features. Now, if you're in Windows, there's other features in there as well. So what I'm gonna show you here is, I'm gonna pop over to internet. I think I have it, Remina, right here, yeah. So this machine's gonna RDP into my Windows machine, so. Okay, so here I have my remote machine, okay? And this is Windows, as you can see with the Windows uh, 11 button. Over here, you have more options, which actually allows you to enable RDP session sharing or direct the IP access like we were talking about before. You could actually disable those options. Now, if I open remote desktop, actually, you know what? I'm not gonna enable it yet. Say I don't have it open, okay? I'm gonna go to my main PC, hit up the desktop over here, get my password in. All you see is my login session. Like I have to actually log in, right? I'm gonna close this out. But if I go back into here and enable RDP session sharing, okay? It's gonna hit yes. It's gonna do something in the background. Not ready, ready, okay. Now, if I go into the same desktop again, there we have my session sharing, which means it's actually taking over my remote desktop sharing and I could actually show if this is hosted in a server, somebody's remote desktop in, but you need to show them how to do something, you can have the sharing ability and they could see what's going on. So let me see if I can minimize this because this is scaled. And if I was to move this, there you go. So you're sharing the remote desktop session through the regular session. This way everybody could view what's going on. Now you can see this is grayed out because I don't have the ability to adjust the settings. You can unlock that. Remember I was talking to you about it earlier, but yeah, that is, it. This is some very impressive software that actually has features that I really need, which is especially tunneling and the remote desktop sharing support. This also has file transfer like you normally find on uh, TeamViewer or any desk. But best of all, the whole thing is that you can share your own relay server. Now, I do have two screenshots right here, which I'll put here. When I'm not on the relay server, you could see that it actually goes to some foreign IPs because they have their own public rendezvous uh, relay server and it just hits whatever it can and then when I actually put in my own IP it does not reach out to any rendezvous server or actually reach to my physical public IP address right over here there's another thing that I didn't show you on here which you have to read the documents is that they give you a portable version of the file that you can actually rename the file so that you don't have to tell anybody the configuration so you could actually input the host name and the key send it off to you know, your friend who doesn't know much about computers or your parents or whatever it is, you could just send them this one file that is pre-configured to your host. That way they could be on your setup where you could do remote desktop support for them. Anyway, that is it for me. I really like the software. If you guys have any questions about this, hit it up in the comments down below. If you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hit that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is gonna be out. And I say my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.